Hey you folks, so I remember, you all remember last time I was doing a video on SP batteries, I made this silly little thing and uh, well apparently that was one of the best things since uh, sliced bread, but um, you know it's, it is genuinely a good battery because these things are significantly higher capacity than this garbage and you know they fit just the same and it's you know really easy to build one of these doesn't require any permanent modification etc the whole idea was you get one of these PCBs printed from Osh Park and with how they make PCBs um, there ends up being these little uh, tabs on the board that usually you just file off with a needle file or something uh, but with these tabs the idea is you file off exactly as much of the tab as you need and then you can just kind of wedge it into the SP, wedge one corner and then drop the battery in, put the battery cover on and Bob Gianti and it works just great. The whole idea was that it was a cheap, easy, accessible mod that anyone can do and it turned out great. It seems to work great. Um, but there have been a few, uh, there, there's been changes. Um, a few months ago, quite a few months ago, I ended up doing a video on this one. Well, maybe not this one in particular. Uh, I think this is another one that I built after I made the video. But uh, this is the battery mod that Retro Modding is currently selling. It is basically my battery mod, and I even made the PCB for it um, for them to sell. And um, it's basically the same concept, except that the PCB is a little bit smaller and fits into this bracket that holds the battery as well. And the idea is that the bracket holds everything in place so that if your SP is, you know, a little bit looser on the tolerances or, you know, if you get this thing filed down to fit and then end up reshelling your SP and then it doesn't quite fit anymore, I mean, it'll, it'll still work. In fact, this one's a bad example because that one will wedge in there nicely. But, um... I have this one here that I have taped down that I was using for testing. You know, that one fits in there all loosey-goosey. And you can see it makes good enough contact, but, you know, maybe a hard bump will uh, disconnect that and, you know, ruin your day. But anyway, Retro Modding decided to uh, work on this project. They enlisted me for help, and so far, so good. It seems to be working nicely. Um, and they even released the files publicly if you want to DIY one yourself, you know, like if they're out of stock, if you can't order one from them, or, you know, maybe you're just the weirdo who likes doing things yourself. Like, you know, I get it. It's, it's a thing. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, order the PCBs. They come, if you order them from Osh Park using retro modding's link they will have a little retro modding logo on the front of them i i made these for myself before i knew that they were going to be releasing the files and i didn't want to show this off with their logo without ordering it, it was a whole big can of worms that i didn't want to open but then they ended up taking care of that themselves when they released the files that i made for them but that's besides the point when you get them from osh park they do have these little uh, tabs on them that you are going to want to file off a cheap needle file set will be all you need or you can do it with sandpaper but this is much easier highly recommend getting yourself one of these it's like four bucks at Harbor Freight if you have one for a whole set not just the one file and I use these things all the time highly recommended um, of course the more you spend the nicer file set you'll get just not necessarily at Harbor Freight anyway once you get it filed down, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. Next, you'll need the battery itself, which is the exact same cell that we've been using for all my mods, the 603048s. And you will need the 3D printed bracket. Um, so for this, of course, you'll need a 3D printer, um, which I guess doesn't really make it cheaper to DIY if you factor that in for the end of the cost. But anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, there is, if you're anything like me, your print's going to come out like garbage. It's going to take a little while to clean up. That's fine. Um, if you're anything like me, also, you'll probably have a few prints that look like this, where you broke them. 
This is also fine, just cut off the uh, sharp bits, you know, finish cleaning up the supports, and uh, it'll be good. I'm not going to bother with this one for other reasons, mostly because I already got this one cleaned up. But uh, <laughs> it, it'll be fine. This middle support bracket isn't explicitly necessary. Helpful, but not explicitly necessary. Anyway, so the idea is that the battery cell goes in here. PCB goes on here. And then you solder these together, just not necessarily in that order. You probably want to solder them together first. There we go. And then that will drop in there. Just like that. It's a little, uh, little flimsy without the battery in there, but as you can see, it works just fine. But anyway, let's get on to assembly. Now, a lot of people are getting hung up on the fact that the retro modding version and even the PCB itself has this footprint here because the retro modding version has a battery socket. Now, the battery socket, so socket, socket, the battery socket is pretty nice if you're assembling, I don't know, 100 of these things, you just click it on, you're done. But um, if you're doing it yourself, the battery socket, it's not, it's not necessary at all. You can order the socket that goes on the PCB itself. It's just a two pin ACHR connector. Uh, very low profile, very nice. The socket that goes on the PCB, very cheap. Love it. Socket that goes on the battery on the other hand, it's cheap, but it does not come with the pins pre-installed. You have to order the pins separately and you have to order a $90 crimp tool. There are not, that I can find, any pre-assembled pigtails that you can buy and just solder on. So, that's why there's these big old solder pads on the battery. It's the exact same thing as the old version that I, uh, that I did here and just broke. Um, it's just the pads are next to each other instead of at the four corners, or at the four corners, two corners. Uh, so what we will need to do, I have already slightly modified this battery um, I find that these ones in particular, well, they come with the, the tape all on the sides and around them. I find that tolerances are already pretty tight, so I just removed the tape. And then just to make my life easier, I relocated the wires to come out the center instead of coming out the side. It does not make any difference. If they're coming out the side, all you do is you fold it up and you fold it over, just like in this one. But anyway, let's go ahead and get dish shimmered. So I'm going to cut these pretty darn short. And as usual, when uh, cutting battery wires, you only want to do one at a time, or you're going to have a bad time, because they will short. Got to be careful when stripping them too, especially you cut them as short as I did. There we go. And then come in here, pin this up. Try not to short these out while you're soldering them. Molten solder is conductive, fairly certain. Black is negative, red is positive, it is labeled. Once that is soldered together, pop that bad boy in there. 
that lined up the right way around. And that'll slot in. Might require a little bit of cleanup in your 3D print. I know my printer is not calibrated and I have put in exactly zero effort to fix that problem. But uh, it'll go in eventually. That's it. Boom. Pop this into SP. You're good to go. All done. Now, this one in particular does have a little bit of a bulge. Um, that is because my batteries are slightly oversized. Not all batteries are made equal. You can see I have two different brands here, CL and, uh, excuse me, HHS. These CL ones work nice, but the capacity is a little bit lower. These HHS ones work even better, and their capacity is highly overstated, but they're a little bit tighter on the tolerances. And just find that sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking to, to get it to work. Also, not all SP shells are made equally, and some have better tolerances than others. Um, it does fit on this side. The problem is on this side, so it might also be that I just need to clean up my print a little bit more. But again, just a little bit of tinkering, and that's it. If you're still real nervous or you've had some real bad experiences with batteries and it's just not working out for you, they do also make 52, 30, 48 sized cells and these are going to be lower capacity because they are physically smaller, but check this bad boy out. It is 5 point, well I guess in this case 5.11 millimeters thick, whereas this one, 6. So, a little bit thinner. That extra tolerance, or that extra clearance helps significantly. Um, especially if you're one of those weirdos who likes to mod the piss out of your Game Boy. But anyway, there you go. Go ahead and check out the description. I'll throw links to uh, Retro Modding's bracket that you can go ahead and print. And the, uh, the PCB that you can buy. Uh, I'll also throw a link to their store where you can just buy one pre-assembled if you want to do that. The nice thing about buying one pre-assembled is if there's a problem, um, you know, you have their support behind you. Whereas if you do it yourself, you're, it's your problem if there's a problem. Um, I'll also go ahead and throw a link to the Retro Game Repair Shop version. Uh, theirs is DIY and it is technically the older version. Uh, but it is functionally identical, and they come with uh, batteries from a brand that I have trust that I have tested and been very satisfied with. I have not tested the specific ones that Retro Modding is selling, but I have tested batteries from another mod from the same brand, and I've been very satisfied with those. So I have no doubt those are fine too. But either way, good stuff. Check out the links. Thanks for watching, guys fantastic night and uh, I guess depending on when you watch this happy Christmas or not you do you